Hello and welcome to another Dragonstorm Studios video. And today we're going to be taking our skills from the first video where we drew the letter E in two point perspective and we're going to then use those to draw a city block. So we're going to start with our sandbox and it's going to be rectangular this time because in most cases your paper will be rectangular as well. We've got our dots on either end which represent our vanishing points, the far periphery of our site, and we've got our structure in the middle, which is a vertical line, and that's the basis for our building. Uh, so we're going to draw from the top and bottom of that structure to each of the vanishing points a line which is diagonal, and that will create our kite or our diamond shape from the last video as well. And that's where things are going to diverge a little bit. Even though the skills are the same, the application is going to be a little bit different. So all lines left to right are going to go to a vanishing point. All lines that are up and down are going to stay straight. So here's the edge of our first building, just like with the E last time around. Instead of doing our three prongs with the letter E, we're actually going to just draw the edge of that building as a straight line. And there's our first structure. If I wanted to add a door, I go from the bottom of that structure and I create a vertical line going up as high as I want that door to go. And then from the top of that structure, lines going left to right, go to the vanishing point. I decide how wide to make that door. It could be a regular door for a person. It could be a garage door, which is much wider. Let's make a door for a person. And let's make that line a little straighter. There we go. And we can give that door a little handle and you've got a way in now. I can erase the lines I don't need anymore on top. And there is our door. A window, just like with the letter E that we did, is simply a line, which is vertical. And from the top and bottom of that line, we go to the vanishing point. It'll make a triangular shape like that. We decide how wide we want that window to be. We want this one maybe to be a little skinny as well. And we just erase the lines we don't need anymore when we're finished. I'll get rid of actually the building's guideline as well. And there we have a window for our building. And we can do lots of little windows. We, want, we might want to line them up so they are all even, which would make sense, especially in an apartment building, which just looks, looks to be. And to save myself some time, I'm just going to stop where the window would end. Just allows you to create that effect without worrying about erasing too much. And since these line up, these two would line up. We're going to make some more windows there. The windows would get smaller as they get further away from us. So our next set of windows, which would line up, so I can still see the lines I had there, there's one, would be skinnier than the ones closer to us. So there's our second window, and it is less wide than the first one because it's further away from us. And maybe a little bit higher up. There we go. Okay. If I want another building next to it, I would start with the corner of that building close to us. So that would be right about here. And if these buildings are right next to each other, if it's taller than the first building, it would go up higher than this initial line that I had for the building. And then it would go toward the vanishing point as well from the top and bottom, but stopping where the building in front of it would overlap it. And we get another right here. Let's say that building is fairly long compared to the first one. Let's put it right there. And because I've got some space between these buildings, I'm going to have an alleyway right there, which is formed because that building is so much further away. If the building next to the first one on this side was right next to, uh, they were right side by side, then we wouldn't have a space between the edge of one building and the corner of another. So we would just extend this one here, maybe to, let's say about here. It's a shorter building this time. We would also go to the vanishing point. And I would just decide how why to make that building. This one maybe is a, a much more skinny building over here. And it's just right next to it. 
you wouldn't be able to see anything of the left side of the building because the building in front of it here is in the way. And I can get rid of that line as well. And maybe we'll give it uh, a wider, like a garage door over here. Actually, if it's for a car, we might be higher up. So let's, there we go. Make a nice wide garage door for that building. And maybe it's got just two windows up top here. So we'll do one over here and then a skinnier one over here. Okay. And again, if you're not sure, draw the entire line in and that way you can guide yourself to drawing in the other windows so you know where they, where they stop. And just erase the lines you don't need when we're finished. So you've got another building right there. I'm just gonna darken that line so you can see it better. All right, and again, you can do some doors on the side as well. And then to finish the effect. So I'll take a moment to add some more windows and doors to this building and we'll be back in just one moment. All right, so all the windows line up both vertically and horizontally. And you can see there you've got that 3D effect there in the building. Now, if you want to have a fire exit, perhaps on this side of the building, instead of the lines going to the left finishing point, as they are on the left side of the building, anything on the right side of the building will go to the right vanishing point. So that's something to keep in mind as you're working away. And one thing I think that a lot of people do get mixed up, they want to have all of the lines on their buildings on the left going to the left vanishing point, when that just isn't the case. So that's another example of something you'll get better at with practice. But you can certainly see how the buildings are beginning to take shape and start to look really good. For the sidewalk, we have to think about the idea that it's going to go around the buildings to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the corner of the building closest to us and just drop it a couple of, well, about a centimeter perhaps. And then I'm going to have it, that dot, go also to the vanishing point because even the sidewalk is going to appear to get smaller as it gets further away from us. And so it's also going to behave like the buildings do when it comes to perspective. For the central block of that um, sidewalk, we're just going to have the lines from the building extend. So this line here going to the right vanishing point is going to extend to the edge of the sidewalk. And this line going to the left vanishing point is also going to extend past the building onto the sidewalk. And that's going to make the first block of that uh, sidewalk. I'm not sure why that word is giving you so much trouble today, but it is. To show the height of the sidewalk, because the road's going to be a little bit lower than the sidewalk is, we're just going to create another little line going down like this. And from the bottom of it, it will also go to both vanishing points. And now it looks like the sidewalk is raised. You've got some height to it. This edge of the sidewalk is then going to create a vertical line below it. And that just shows the, the depth of that block of sidewalk. And every line of sidewalk is going to go to a vanishing point. So here's our first one, our second one about here, our third one maybe about here. And we're trying to eyeball it, making them a little bit smaller as they get further back. And they also would have the little ticks that show the height of the sidewalk. Same on this side. We're just going to try to make them a little bit wider as we go. All right, and there you can see the sidewalks as they recede to the horizon, getting smaller, getting less distinct, and uh, that sense of reality being created in our work. So our sandbox hopefully has given you some inspiration to try this yourself. You are the architect after all, so create whatever kind of buildings you want. You don't have to line the windows up, for example. You can add chimneys, you can add all sorts of different details to the work. In the next video, we're going to talk about making things a bit more complicated. We're going to add a light source, some shadows and shading. We're going to finish up our road and we're going to end up with an intersection, a crossroad there in our scene. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and have yourselves a fantastic day.